This is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest Facebook Live. It's great to have you here, and this lecture is going to be on hematuria in the ER setting. So I want to welcome everybody, and just to let you know in advance that uh, I have a hard time seeing the uh, questions on Instagram, where we're live on Instagram, because it scrolls up the screen, but on Facebook I can see it really well. So if you want to ask a lot of questions, ask on Facebook. So Lily told me to remind you that, you know, we, we're like a baseball team, we break these bottles of champagne and spray them all over the room uh, because it's our 21st anniversary of CTSS. Now, the reason we don't spray them all over the room is no one ever cleans the floor here, so if we spray them, we'd have to clean it ourselves. And B, I don't know about you, but when you get champagne, uh, okay, obviously this is like apple juice or sparkling cider, but whatever crap you get in your computer, it ruins it, then you can't type. So we can't do anything. So we can maybe wave the bottle. Okay, so all right, enough of that. Uh, the other thing is, some of you may have seen, it was kind of a, on the spur of a moment, we interviewed, I interviewed Michelle Ballard from uh, Condé Nast, which is one of the companies that New Yorker, Vogue Magazine, and many, many other things, and she gave a spectacular talk at Hopkins the other day. We're going to write it up, and hopefully it'll be in JACR in the near term, but we also, uh, it was on the 4th, which is on Tuesday, <clears throat> two days ago. And it's on Facebook Live. So if you haven't heard it, I spoke to her a little bit. She gave an excellent talk about team building, about strategies, the importance of really uh, when you hire, hiring correctly. We've had other people say that as well. But she made the point is you want to tell people the good, the bad, and the ugly, what the job is, what it entails, what you expect. So expectations become very critical. And um, she gave an excellent talk about you know her own personal experience in building companies and how she strategizes where she is now, and the fact that she's a very, very small um, turnover really kind of shows how well she's doing. And that was just a wonderful, wonderful talk. So <clears throat> take a look at it. It's about, we did a short little uh, Facebook Live. It was about 10 or 12 minutes, so it's really worthwhile looking at. Other things I think just to uh, mention, one of our speakers who actually did a Facebook Live with me, Jim Travicant, his article when he spoke here last May just came out in JACR, in the in-press uh, online part of JACR. It was quoted in a few of the business journals in radiology, and Jim spoke very passionately. And when he speaks, it's always very passionately. He's amazing. But he spoke very passionately about the fact that academic institutions or any institution is going to have to change how they behave that in the world of medicine changing, you need to change. And so he made the comment about new people getting into medicine from Amazon to Walmart to CVS. And sure enough, Walmart just in Georgia on Tuesday this week opened a new center. It's part of one of their Walmarts where they have x-rays and labs and physicians and everything else. So who is delivering healthcare, where it's developed, where it's being delivered is changing. The hospitals are not going to be the center, it's the convenience. You're going to go to the Walgreens and you're going to buy your prescriptions. You're going to be told what you need. You're going to see your doctor. You get your blood pressure for free, but you get your flu shot and soon maybe you'll get your CT or your x-ray. and It'll be transmitted somewhere and things will be very efficient. There'll be lower cost. So all of this is a combination of trying to maintain costs. Remember, some of the big institutions have a lot of legacy they can't survive with. It's very expensive. You're a new player. You don't have any legacy. You just open what you think works well at the sites you want to do it. You don't need to be everywhere in the inner city, perhaps. So you open nice sites where you have good paying patients and you have a nice clean ledger and you only offer certain services. And I can guarantee the services they offer are going to be profitable. Or if they're not profitable, they're lost leaders. If I come in and give you a free flu shot, and then you come in for your prescriptions. I make money in your prescriptions. I may not make money on your flu shot, but I'll make a lot of money on your prescriptions. So it's a really good business model. You're seeing Amazon doing it now for their own employees in Seattle with telehealth and uh, prescription services, pill pack. They're buying everything. Soon you'll get your pill pack, and then you also they'll give you a couple uh, some tea, you know, or chicken soup from Whole Foods. So I can't eat chicken soup from Whole Foods because it's not kosher. But if it was kosher, you could eat it. You know, I need to get Second Avenue perhaps. But, you know, the point is that you can get matzo ball soup, your prescription with pill pack, see a physician, do it over the Internet, 
and be treated at a reasonable cost, that indeed becomes very, very exciting. So in saying that, what about hematuria? That's why you all came here. You paid the big bucks, hematuria. Oh yes, let me also tell you that we have our course beginning next Friday. That's Friday the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. I will give you a flower if you come. But Valentine's Day, uh, in the, um, we're down at the Swan in Orlando, wonderful hotel, it was all redone, part of the Marriott chain. You get Marriott points, Envoy points, what could be better? And it's gonna be great weather. I looked at my phone, it's 85 degrees. So it's gonna be really terrific. It was 40 the other day, the low is gonna be 65, 70. So come on down, it's a great meeting. We have Perry Pickard, we have uh, a, a number of really good speakers, Linda Chu, Stefan Zimmerman, just to name a couple of people, myself. So it should be a great time. So hopefully we'll see you there. And one of the things we will talk about will be hematuria. Now I mentioned the Swan is a Marriott hotel. Uh, I have Marriott points, so I'm gonna give a plug to Marriott, but then I can give me an extra points. But the plug I'm giving is on February 19th, which is less than two weeks from today, uh, Brian King, who's the CEO of Marriott, who's one of the greatest speakers you will ever hear, is gonna speak on the customer experience. And no one speaks about, and no one lives that life better than Brian, because Marriott, which goes anywhere from the uh, low-end hotels to the Ritz-Carlton, really knows what customers expect and try to meet or exceed that expectation. And he spoke here a couple of years ago, making the point how much hospitals and medical centers need to really behave very much like hotels and really treat their customer, their patient, perfectly. And it's the experience that people want and people expect. And the Marriott tradition goes back to Bill Marriott. It goes back to the Ritz-Carlton and Horst Schulte's gentlemen and gentlewomen serving gentlemen and gentlewomen. So it's something that's in their DNA, and that becomes indeed very, very important. So talking about DNA, let's talk about hematuria. One of the most common things we see in the ER is hematuria. Very, very common. Mike Fairley gave a talk at RSNA a couple of years ago and made the point that hematuria might make up 25% of our uh, cases of CT. So typical thing is if you have bad flank pain, they think it's a stone, you get a CT, it's a non-contrast scan. Now, obviously, if you know it's a stone, you can get a plain film or maybe do nothing, but um, it's a non-contrast CT. And I do need to emphasize, if you see a big stone that's obstructing, case closed. You treat the stone, hopefully it'll pass. People look at calcification of the stone, over 1,000 or 1,100, over six or seven millimeters, the stone's unlikely to pass. You may need to intervene. Okay, that can be very helpful. But I'm gonna say to you, the stone study is negative. There's no stone. Or maybe there's a few tiny little ditzels in the kidney that are not very important. What do you do then? I'm always concerned when you have hematuria, you get a stone study, you call down to the ER when you read the study, and you say the study's negative, there's no stone. The ER doc, the nurse, the PA, whoever, interprets that as meaning the study is normal. And I always emphasize in my report, and I'm not a very big hedger, but I always say is that if the patient has persistent hematuria, further workup is necessary with, with contrast enhanced CT. A stone study is really good for picking up stones as the cause of hematuria. You pick up obstruction, you pick up the stones. But a stone study that's negative does not mean the person's kidneys and the urinary tract and anything else is normal. You need IV contrast. Sometimes you see inflammation on the non-contrast with stranding, but often you'll miss pilo. You'll surely miss infarcts. You'll surely miss tumors, be they transitional cell or renal cell. You'll especially miss spore tumors when they don't distort the contour. If you have a seven centimeter mass, it's gonna look really ugly on the non-contrast, so you'll know to say there's a mass there. But a lot of the tumors we pick up now are these one to four centimeters, and they may not distort the contour. Same thing with transitional cell. If it's more centrally or in the ureter, it causes a hydronephrosis, you'll see obstruction. But it's in the upper pole calyces, it may distort the calyces, but a non-contrast CT not show you a whole lot. And you're going to run into all sorts of problems. So I think it's very important to really think about your protocols and make sure the clinicians know that if it's a non-contrast scan and it doesn't show anything, you need to give contrast. Now, what do you do with contrast? Well, we like to do three phases with hematuria, particularly in patients over age 50. Arterial phase helps me with perfusion changes, helps me look at the vessels, 
I can tell this renal artery stenosis of fibromuscular dysplasia are there other unusual vascular causes, including aneurysms or pseudoaneurysms. The arterial phase also shows me the tumor, if there is one, and I can tell between a papillary and a clear cell. A lot of the work with radiomics shows that it's that arterial phase that is most critical, being able to predict outcome to patients and response to chemotherapy, particularly tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Very simple. Venous phase is excellent because some tumors show better on venous phase. Venous phase is the best phase for looking at the IVC and renal veins. You don't have that early arterial phase where the things may not be opacified, and perhaps you'll overcall the presence of thrombus or undercall because you make an assumption there's nothing present but flow-related changes. So venous phase is really good for that. Venous phase also gives me a good look at the perirenal space, so does the arterial phase, but I'm picking up mainly the vessel stuff. So it's really renal veins, renal uh, IVC, if a patient has tumors looking for the fact that we're about 100% accurate in determining vascular involvement. Then comes the excretory phase. I like it about four or five minutes. Excretory is critical because you see the images behind me there? That's excretory phase, you see the ureters. If you don't do excretory phase, you're gonna miss the transitional cell carcinomas in the kidney that are small, that amputate the calyces, don't cause big hydronephrosis, or the filling in the calyces, or the filling in the pelvis but not obstructing. You're gonna miss the tumors in the ureter because sometimes, okay, tumors are big enough for a position that they obstruct, but many times they do not. And you see the filling defect in the ureter, you see narrowing, you see transitions, but you may not see obstruction. The bladder, you know, often the bladder, when we do the imaging, we do the arterial phase straight through the bladder, because often bladder tumors are small, but they enhance to about 90 Hounsfield units on the arterial phase. But also, you're going to pick up a lot of bladder tumors on the delayed phase. There'll be filling defects in the bladder. And yes, occasionally stones or blood clots can be confusing, but typically it's not going to be a problem. So that excretory phase is great, especially as I mentioned, transitional cell. The other thing with TCCs, we know multifocal kidney, ureter, bladder, quadrilateral kidney. We want to be able to look very carefully, not just at seeing the lesion, but making sure we're not missing additional lesions. So again, the protocol becomes very important uh, with that. Now, I, I do see a, a question. I got a few hellos from David, and I got a hello from John. Uh, Raja wants to know criteria for hematuria. I think mainly the thing is microscopic versus macroscopic. If you have microscopic hematuria, particularly a patient under age 35, it's probably not going to be a tumor. Macroscopic hematuria, if you're over 50 or 60, is probably 30, 40% is a tumor, and probably 15 to 30% if you're over 35. Microscopic means you pick it up on a test, and macroscopic, you can see the blood. If a patient has macroscopic hematuria at any age, we do multiple more phases. If they are microscopic and they're under 35, then we're going to do less phases, less distance. We'll do only the kidneys initially because you're not going to pick up incidental bladder cancers in 35-year-olds unless they had some occupational exposure. Um, so I think that's probably the question. And then I see Lacey is, is calling from home. Hopefully she's not calling from my home. If she's calling from my home, that means she broke in. I'll have to call the police. So I assume she's calling from her home, not my home. That's a joke. Okay. Um, um, what else? Any other questions anyone has? Okay. So let, we'll just keep going. So the other thing talking about hematuria, I think at a minimum, besides the coronal reconstructions, which are critical, sagittals aren't that helpful really in the ureter, but they're really good in looking at the kidney, localizing lesions coming off the edge of the kidney, true for coronal and sagittal. I also think that it's very important to get MIP imaging, like a slab, a sliding MIP, maybe five to 10 millimeters thick. I think sometimes the sliding MIP is what best shows you the calceal abnormalities. It also is what best shows you the abnormalities in the ureter and occasionally in the bladder. So that becomes very important. I think a critical thing in renal imaging is the phases and the timing. Five cc's per second injection or at least four to five cc's a second, uh, depending on the creatinine and other things. Omni 350 versus Visi 320 works very well. PO, you can just give water if you're only doing dedicated kidney studies. I give water again. I want to make sure I'm not overcalling or undercalling the presence of gastric or duodenal pathology. It doesn't slow you down. It hydrates the patient. Patients always look thirsty to me. 
No one ever complained about good water. You don't need to give them, um, you know, Avion. You know, by the way, do you know that Avion spells naive backwards? I'm, I'm really, I, that's true. Look at a mirror you could see. Where was I now? But I think that's the thing is giving water works very nicely uh, in that regard as well. So let's see. Can you discuss the morphology of red blood cells depending where the bleeding comes from? No, I can't. The bottom line is I think when you have positive and you're, uh, I get to talk about a lot of things, but that's not one of the things I'm going to talk about today. When you have hematuria, we talk about macroscopic microscope, as I mentioned. That's the key thing. That's the key definition of whether you're really going to find something and the chance of that being a positive study. Macroscopic hematuria, older patient, again, you're going to push 60% positive. But even, but even younger patients, macroscopic makes all the difference in the world. It's the microscopic that we typically don't worry about. So those are probably the main things. There's a lot of good lectures on CT as us. Uh, on the kidney, we are, um, I saw that uh, Sarah uh, just put up our newest um, edition of our I lecture series, and we have 26 new lectures, one a week. The half a year is 26, and that is going to be terrific. It's the Apple Store, and if um, anything happens as usual, we probably will get it accepted within the next 24 hours. So you'll see it by the weekend. It's going to have 26 incredible new lectures with, so that should be pretty, 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 pretty good. Um, anything else? Anyone got any last minute questions? If not, um, we'll, we'll stop there. Again, let me just make a, a, tell you that if you're in the area of Hopkins, again, 5 o'clock, 19th of February, it's going to be awesome. There is nobody better than Brian King at speaking about customer service. And I don't care where you are, even at the Mayo Clinic, it doesn't matter. You, you need to brush up on your uh, patient relations and customer service. It becomes very critical. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Last breaking news, Raja. Empty bladder versus full bladder. I like the full bladder. So surely if the bladder is empty on the early phase, you may not see the subtle enhancement. So we give oral 1,000 cc's, 500 to 1,000 cc's before, and we tell the patient not to go to the bathroom because we want a distended bladder. That allows us to pick up these one centimeter or less bladder cancers. The bladders collapse, you're not going to see them. Also, the same thing is if you pick up things with the bladder filled with positive contrast, if the bladder is not distended, you're not going to see diddly squat. So you really need, and I hate 10-minute delays, Nicole, there's no reason to wait more than five minutes. Do you know if you wait five minutes less, you can do another 10 patients a day? But the main reason is we do a lot of 3D mapping. What we find is when you wait 10 minutes, the calyces become so dense, you get beam hardening artifact. And you can obscure things like papillary necrosis or overcall many things because you get these defects in the kidney because the contrast becomes very, very dense and you get beam hardening. The idea about waiting for the ureters to fill, the longer you get, we know from IBPs that's not true. If you're obstructed, you may need to wait hours, but a dilated ureter you can see anyway. It's like looking at a small bowel loop, so it's no problem. So 10-minute delays, I think, is craziness. People do that because maybe they get a snack between the venous. You can go down and get a coffee, have a lunch, then come back. No, 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 no. Five-minute delay is all you need. 10 minutes do not work. It creates more problems Waiting longer is actually a negative. Four to five minutes. Five minutes for you is probably a good time. So that's really the benefit. Better visualization of the calyces, less artifact, more accurate studies, better throughput. Okay? We don't wait 10 minutes for nothing. We do wait 15 for adrenal. But beyond that, we don't wait 10 minutes for anything. So anyway, that's kind of uh, less some last second question comes up. If you ask me a question in the last second after we close, we can sometimes answer it remotely. So again, uh, you can watch this again or tell your friends, cousins, relatives. We'll be live forever on YouTube. We put it there after, Lily puts it there. We're forever live on Facebook. May Facebook live forever, so we'll be there as well. And if not, we'll see you next week. And I forgot what day you're gonna see me, probably Wednesday, because I'm going to Florida Wednesday night, because Thursday I gotta be in Florida, and the meeting starts on Friday, and I gotta, I got to do stuff. Anyway, it's great talking to you. Hope this helped. Again, lots of articles on CTSS, lots of lectures. We have excellent apps on the kidney. 
I think we have this online. Just go get it. There's great talks. Have a great day. Appreciate everybody's attention. Bye-bye.